This is my great guitar build-off 2023 submission and it's made out of pallets. I took all the nails out of these pallets and I ran them all through a table saw so they're all the same width. Then I glued them together and left them to dry for a couple of days. When it had dried I cut all those bits of pallet in half and then glued them back together so I was left with a symmetrical body blank. With the neck blank I drew a centre line, marked where the nut needed to go and drew around the template so I had an outline. The neck blank wasn't quite big enough for the Telecaster headstock that I wanted to have so I had to reshape it a little bit so it's not quite a standard Tele headstock but still looks cool. I didn't have the right size router bit to make the truss rod cavity so I used a kitchen worktop jig ran that down the center of the neck and used that to route the truss rod. To thickness the headstock I used a hand saw and then a belt sander. I've got to be honest it definitely wasn't the best way of doing it so I probably wouldn't do it that way again. After making sure no glue would go in the truss rod cavity I glued the fretboard on and clamped that up. I don't own a thicknesser so I used a belt sander to level the body and turn it into a usable body blank. I also don't own a band saw so I had to use a jigsaw to shape the guitar body as close to the template as I could. Luckily I do own a router so I ran that around the template to refine the body shape using a template. I wanted a comfortable edge around this and I had this big bullnose bit which I've used for a bass guitar build which is still in progress. So I used that and ran that around the edge front and back of this guitar and it makes it feel really nice. It sort of sits against your body. It's not like having an arm contour and a gut cut but it does sort of, it feels sort of halfway there. It's not like the normal right angle edge you get on a Telecaster. It's to be honest, I'm really glad I did that. I think it looks fantastic and it feels fantastic. I went with a 12 inch fretboard radius because I only own one radiusing block and that's 12 inches. It's not too rounded, it's also not too flat, it's perfect. I'll tell you what else is 12 inches, this ruler. To mark the 12th fret, I wanted something a bit different. So I got a bit of the leftover palette and cut that to basically a block shape and I inlaid that into the fretboard. I used that 12 inch radius block to sand it flat. If I'm being honest I think it looks really smart. I didn't want lots of dots up the neck and I think it just looks a lot smarter. I kind of need to know where fret 12 is but apart from that you just use the, the side dots. After using some thin super glue to make sure the frets were glued in nicely and didn't pop out, I dressed the fret ends just because if you're picking this up, which I was doing lots of times to do various things, I didn't want to get loads of cuts. You get end up with loads of tiny cuts. I didn't want that, so I dressed the fret ends, just made it nicer to handle. When it came to thicknessing the back of the neck, I started with a Shinto rasp and it felt like it was taking forever. So I found another way to delicately remove material while also saving lots of time. A circular saw followed by chisels and then a Shinto rasp actually worked perfectly. I would 100% do that again. The scariest part of the build was drilling the hole to try and find the end of the truss rod. Now I did find it first time. I've never done that before. I was worried it was going to go through the back of the neck. Just used a long drill bit and aimed where I thought it was going to be. Should have done it before I put the fretboard on, but I've never done it before. It went well, so whatever. Back to the frets. I used one of Crimson Guitars not straight edges to level the frets board. I then used one of their leveling beams to level the frets. I dressed the fret ends after doing that just so I didn't get any scratches and used one of their triangular files to shape the frets and then finally use some of their fret rubbers. I've never used them before. I have had a set for quite a long time, but I had another set which I gave away. So I used the crimson ones and you go through the different sort of coarsenesses. They're really, really good. I'd recommend buying a set. If you're gonna buy nothing else from Crimson Guitars, buy a set of their fret rubbers. They are fantastic, especially if you've got a Squire. They come with scratchy frets. Just use one of their fret rubbers. Gets rid of the scratchiness. Polished it up quite nicely. I didn't want a neck plate on this guitar and because I used that bull nose, it wouldn't have really worked anyway. So I routed out for the neck pocket and then drilled holes for these ferrules. I just think it looks, it looks far smarter than a neck plate. It really, it just looks better. The pickups, I routed out, this is actually three single coils. So these are three single coil strat pickups. This is the Tone Rider Pure Vintage Strat set. I cannot believe how good these pickups sound, but I wanted it to look like a single coil and a humbucker. So these are two single coils, the bridge and middle, obviously, back to back. We'll get into this later, but the wiring is, uh, it's got a tone and volume, but a concentric pot here, which blends in the middle pickup series. So you can have them, like your, it's got a five-way switch, so it's like your normal Strat, but also if you turn that all the way around, you can have it so these are a humbucker or these are a humbucker. And it looks like a humbucker anyway, so I just think it's really cool, if I'm being honest. I wanted this to look like it was made out of a load of driftwood that you'd found on a beach, so I delicately smashed an axe into the body. I also hammered some chains, different size bits of chain into the body, and made some holes with a drill bit. Initially, when I denailed it and put it all together, it had all these tiny little notches where the nails had been taken out, and I really wanted that look. But when I sort of thicknessed it, they all disappeared and it became smooth. 
Annoyingly, on the back, I've got these two grooves from the edge of a couple of bits of pallet. I should have done this completely reverse, but I didn't. So that's one of the reasons I did all this damage on the front. I wanted it to look like, like it had been beaten up and reassembled and just thrown together. Obviously, I haven't relicked anything, but I wanted the body to look like it was made out of loads of different bits of wood. And that's why I ended up staining every bit of different colour. So this, I got a load of masking tape and I stained, well, in fact, I stained the whole body black to begin with and sanded it back. So I wanted the grain to be more visible. And then I stained each strip a different colour, but I did it symmetrically. So I just thought it would look better if I'm being honest. And the black does bring out the grain a bit more. What I did find is the purple stain isn't that purple. So I think this is the crimsons one. And this is one I made where I mixed some red and blue together. It looks quite good. My friend Steve called me up after I'd done this and he suggested I use a blowtorch on it. So that's what all these marks are for. I've got a bit, it just sort of ties it together. So I do think that was a cool idea actually. I then sprayed it all with a matte finish. So that's the neck, not the fretboard, but I sprayed the body with a matte finish. So that's over the blowtorch marks. I didn't want you getting any black stuff on your body or your clothes uh, when you play this. So whoever gets this. Um, with the neck, I actually used Monty's instrument food. It's absolutely phenomenal. I use it on every, every dark fretboard I use it on. So it makes the ebony look absolutely fantastic. And then just put all the hardware on. So put the tuners on, they're staggered so it shouldn't need a string tree. So these ones are longer and all these other ones, these four are shorter, which is quite nice. The bridge, obviously beneath the bridge, I've got two strat routes, but they're sort of reversed so you can fit the Stratocaster pickups. It's got through strings, through body strings. Looks really nice. I wanted this guitar to look like it had a single coil and a humbucker in it, but these are actually three Strat single coils. And what I've done, I've wired it so you can have all three pickups like a Strat, this is a five-way switch, but you can also have it, it's got a concentric pot here, so you can turn it round and it turns, it brings in the middle pickup in series. So in a couple of positions, you can have these two like a humbucker and these two like a humbucker. So you get all your standard Strat positions but also a couple of humbucker positions, but it looks like a humbucker and single coil. And this will work on any Telecaster. You might have to remove a bit of material under the bridge. Obviously I had to drill a couple of holes in each side of the bridge to mount it, but it just, it's so versatile. It's such a cool mod. Obviously I've wired this for a Telecaster, so it's got effectively two knobs. This is a five-way switch. This one's volume. This is your normal tone and the blend is on top of here. If this were a Strat, you just have the blend knob somewhere else, you know, in the other strap position, so you'd have volume, tone, and blend. So you could do this on a strat as well. Well, it is a, a strat mod, really. But it just looks cooler on a Telecaster because you look at it and think, well, that's a single coil and a humbucker, but it isn't. I've done a wiring diagram if you want to do this. This is really easy on a telly. Obviously, you need a humbucker bridge plate. Uh, apart from that, you might have to remove some material under the bridge, but drilling the holes through the bridge was the hardest, well, I said hardest part. It took about two minutes. It wasn't difficult. Wiring the concentric pot sourcing one, and they're quite expensive, I think it's about 20 pounds, maybe more than that by the time you buy the knobs. Really easy, you can do it on a Strat as well. You could do it with two humbuckers on a Strat, but I think it'd be cool to have on a Strat if you had the single coil and humbucker scratch plate. You've got three knobs on it anyway, so you'd have volume, tone, and blend. Really easy on a Strat. It's easier on a Strat than on a telly and cheaper. Within here, on top of all the fancy wiring, we've also got a treble bleed. And not just any treble bleed, it's a variable treble bleed. For those who don't know, a treble bleed means when you turn the volume down normally, you lose a bit of the high end. With a treble bleed, you don't because it bleeds the treble to the output. But with a variable treble bleed, you can choose where that treble peak is and how high that treble peak is. So it's a lot like having uh, active electronics, but it's not active, it's passive. You don't need any batteries and it's from a company called Marstronic, and it comes with crocodile clips, so you don't even have to do any soldering if you don't want to, but I soldered this in because I'm fine with doing a bit of soldering. Just means you've got a bit more variation to the types of treble bleeds you can have, so you can make it sound like Fender, Seymour Duncan, Mojo Tone, anyone's treble bleed. Also, because it's variable, if you go from home where you're using a short cable to a gig where you're using longer cable, when you're using a longer cable, you lose a bit of treble, so with this, if you're doing a gig using a longer cable, you can just adjust it. So if you want a bit more treble, just turn a thing, it takes 10 seconds. If you're wondering how this sounds, it sounds fantastic, thanks for asking.
Wow. <laughs> so good. Obviously you've got your normal Strat 5 position, so I'm just going to play some basic chords. That's your neck, neck and middle. Obviously middle's a bit more spaced out. Middle. Those two. And bridge. Interestingly, the bridge with this Tone Rider Pure Vintage set doesn't sound quite often with a Strat bridge. It can sound terrible, but these actually sound quite nice. In fact, um, this guitar is being given away as part of the Great Guitar Build Off. And I've got, I'm going to get another set of these because I don't want to give these pickups away. I want them in one of my guitars. Just so impressed with them, especially with this, with the series function. Absolutely. Oh, and it's got a treble bleed, so you don't lose the high end. Let's roll the high end off. Oh, that's perfect with a humbucker, actually. Let's do it on parallel first. So that's in parallel. We'll do it in series as well. So it gets quieter, but you don't lose that high end. It's absolutely brilliant. Annoyingly, I'm giving this away, so I'm gonna to have to do it on one of my guitars, but I don't have a spare telly. Also, the action's a bit high up here, so I'll sort that, but this is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I know it looks a bit basic, but under the bonnet, you've got, some, you've got a really cool engine, so that was such a cringy metaphor. I know it looks standard, but it does so many cool things. And check this Chapman SG out. Last year, I got a Chapman ML2 kit, which is like the Les Paul, cut a chunk out of it and turned it into, I'm gonna say like an SG, like a Gibson SG, but it was a Chapman, so I called it the Chapman ML4. And with the neck pickup on that, it was a humbucker slot, and I put one single coil under a humbucker cover. So it was, again, it was humbucker single coil. There's a bit of a theme here, isn't there? 